Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Pre-Orders and Prototype. This is the segment of Radic Media where I choose a new pre-ordered collectible that's come out on the market. I go through all the prototype photos one by one. I tell you what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And then at the end of this episode, you find out whether or not I ordered it or I didn't. So let's find out. This, as you can see beside me, is the premium format exclusive Venom statue from Sideshow Collectibles that just came out. Uh, last episode, we did the life-size Deadpool bust, which was really cool. This one here is $624.99 US. He's a little bit expensive compared to the Spider-Man that came out. He was a little bit less, and the Carnage is considerably actually lower. But I'm going to do him on next week's episode, so we'll kind of save that for that. He is 24 inches high, so... Spider-Man was 26, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I reviewed him on the show, and he is quite massive, but they scaled the three of them, Venom, Spider-Man, and Carnage, to go together, so they can kind of have a little bit of a flow. He's 14 inches long by 15 inches wide, so he's actually quite a beast um, of space that's going to take up, and that's pretty normal for Venom, because he's always kind of, you know more extreme, I guess, would be when it comes to the bulk of him. Spider-Man and Carnage are definitely a lot more silhouette. So yes, big statue. We're going to jump right into the first picture here. That one there will kind of repeat because as we go, I just put up the little mini poster there. I'm loving what I saw in this first po photo. I love the blue lighting. I love the way that it kind of goes with the symbiote from what I can see of the alternative classic portrait. This is the face that makes it the exclusive. The other face, as you'll see further down, has a tongue hanging out, which is definitely more venom. Um, I guess I'm just so used to him being all slobbery, like a big giant cute puppy, but angry, violent puppy. I, I think this looks great. Right off the bat, I'm kind of like, ooh, this looks really good. Going to this next picture, the face right off the bat is gorgeous. It's the detailing, the coloring, the lifelike, because they actually did, um, in the write-up of this, talk about a new realistic lifelike paint job on this and, and look that they were going for. Don't like the rest of the body tone already. I love these gray shot background photos because you can actually get a better real like real look of what the statue is going to look like the one before this which i call like the action shot is if they look great but i mean who's going to have a blue light in their display case so that's something that you always go for the gray shots of this don't go for like the little mini poster or the ones that are backlit or actioned with other statues because they're professional photographers that have gone in with lighting to make them look their absolute best this is what you're going to get closer to besides seeing it on the Comic-Con floor and generally seeing the prototypes there. Sideshow's been really good the last couple of years to actually put more of a version of a statue there than the prototype. The prototypes are generally a little bit more lifelike and painted and they're painted by professionals. I hope the skin tone on this changes because right away it's too muddy, it's chunky. I know that they were trying to make it look like the symbiote maybe was moving, at least I hope that's what they were going for, but all in all, it looks really muddy and chunky. The eye detail on this is, is phenomenal, like it almost looks like bone, I think it's beautiful, and the teeth and the gums, it's just so, the head is a winner, like it's actually better than the comic at Venom statue in a way, like I just love the detailing on it. And this next photo here, you see a little bit more of his arm, the back, I do like the way that the spider on the back like the emblem looks more aged and it doesn't really match his eyes which is kind of unfortunate it's it's definitely more yellowed back there the eyes are a lot more white so a little bit off throwing on that already it's like you can tell that somebody else painted one part and maybe somebody else painted the other or i don't know why they wouldn't have matched that up to make them look a little bit closer this next shot here is the one that you saw early, like as, as the show started. This is what I call the mini poster. I would love Sideshow to start including little ones like this to put in your display case would be great. Little, even like a little baseball size card would be really cool with that. This next photo, again, we're getting into the action shot. Now you can see the non-exclusive and exclusive head that comes with it. This is the tongue version. Beautiful, these head sculpts are incredible. They're gorgeous. They really have nailed Venom for me, which is really nice because I actually didn't really like the face of the comic hat one very much. I thought it was just a little too, I don't know, overboard. There's a bit of a weird divot in his chest here, which I'll address later. Here we go. Again, sideshow with your little cute gingers in your photos. You're just going to sell me photos or statues all the time based on these. 
This one's hard because this is like a size compar comparison that they're trying to do with some of the statues. But the problem is they're not telling you how tall he is. Like I'm six foot one, well, six feet, almost six foot one. And that makes a huge difference when I'm comparing something beside me. But 24 inches tall, it is still a good size statue. A lot of it is base, obviously. But this is a little bit weird because you can really tell that the statue's photoshopped into this photo and they've just taken a generic shot of one of the staff members or sculptors or somebody who works for Sideshow and they're going to reuse this and I think that's kind of a little bit deceiving. The next shot here again another action shot with the blue light. Beautiful face detailing and now the white looks like it's completely different actually with the lighting it actually looks like it all kind of blends into itself so hopefully when the final product comes it would have more of a matched up paint job on it. It's hard sometimes because the faces of course are obviously painted along you know like they're all made in factories and you know different pieces you can tell that were painted by different people so hopefully they kind of keep that color scheme together. This next shot here is him. I love this angle. This is so far my favorite angled shot of the statue. I love it looking up at him. I think it looks really cool the way that he's holding on there. I, I do like this look so far of the statue. Here's a better straight on one with the apple. The apple's a good size comparison because most apples are all the same size and you know what an app, you know, everyone knows what an apple looks like. It's funny because some people have tried to order the apple from Sideshow, which is really random and weird. The clouds on the base of this, I'm not digging so much since they went for a hyper realistic look for the statue. It kind of, they look a little I don't know there's I guess supposed to be bomb smoke but they just look it looks weird I'm not I'm not digging it I don't like the fact that his full feet are off the stand that last shot made it look like his foot was actually pressed up against the iron which also would have made a little bit more sense for it bending in a way it could have there's a lot that they could have changed on that one this next shot is more of a side profile this one is bugs me the most. His leg looks like a giant turd on the back. Like it just looks horrible. It looks chunky and it doesn't look good. And it almost looks like a fist. I do like on his opposite foot, the clawed kind of like toenail looks really neat, but this looks like almost like they screwed up and put his arm on his back leg. I don't like it. I guess I'm kind of picky, but again, in this next shot here, I'm going to get, you know, a little bit more of an up close shot of the butt and the leg. That upper thigh muscle looks does not look good. It looks really weird and misproportionate from his arm. If they were gonna make him like this total crazy, like gorilla style looking, you know, venom, they should have pumped out his arms and made them a little bit more size matching. Would have been, would have worked for me because the other leg almost looks like it's thinner and that's kind of off-putting and throwing in this next photo here. And that shows you the opposite side. Again, there's that weird hollow divot in his chest that I'm not, really sure I'm feeling. The clouds look weird. They look like weird cones. They don't look like actual smoke disbursement. This next shot here looks pretty cool though. I loved his, I love his claws. I love his hand. So yeah, the hard thing is though, those shots and angles I'm liking so far are from above and from below. So I would have to stick him up high or, you know, down near the ground, which I don't like doing with my statues. This next shot shows the face in all of its glory. This tongue and face sculpt is bloody incredible. Like if it, if it ends up coming out like this in the final product, it's going to be pretty mind blowing. Like this alone is almost a sale for me in that sense of it. It's just, it's so epically venom. Like it is gorgeous. Here's another shot from the side. You can kind of see where the seam comes in, where the head, but they blended it really nicely. Kind of with the muddy, chunky paint job makes it work a little bit more, but that divot in the chest just looks weird. I don't like it. I think it doesn't look proper for muscle structure. Like it just looks, it just looks too concaved, whereas most of the time Venom is pretty smooth chested. Again, next picture here, that back leg and butt just looks like, it just looks like a giant crap. I, I don't, yeah, I'm sorry, that's awful. It just really looks like a big turd. I don't like it. This next shot here is really neat. I would have liked to have seen more of the symbiote moving. I know that's definitely more of a carnage thing than venom, but this is just a little, I don't know, anticlimactic with this tiny little bit of stuff 
going on to the bricks to make him hold on there. His whole stance and his whole thing doesn't look proper, like with gravity even. It looks a little bit weird. And this, of course, doesn't make sense either because he's it's spread out enough and fast enough for it to if adhere to the building yet the rest of his body's just floating in air. So I think that's kind of a bit of a fail. The base part that isn't the clouds looks great. It's the airbrushing on it, the detailing on it, the stone in the building is good. I actually really like it. Next shot here is a, you know, definitely an action shot with that blue light. If you could get a nice little alcove box with a blue light and then a red light on vet, like Carnage next, that could actually look really cool and maybe make them look like they all match. Next shot here is just a little bit up closer. It's kind of almost the same shot we've already seen previously, but just lit up in blue. And that's it. Those are all the prototype shots. How do I feel about this statue? I don't like it. I think it's the reason why I don't like it is not just because the paint job is muddy, but I don't like the fact that Spider-Man is super matte and airbrushed and really smooth and streamlined. Carnage, which we'll get to to next week's episode, looks more like um, almost like his skin is being peeled off, which is definitely what I was kind of hoping for. Like you can see all the little fine detailing of the muscle. And, but the base on Carnage is um, a stone base. Like it looks like broken material. This base here, they made Black Cat, Spider-Man, Green Goblin, and um, yeah, all of them and Venom here to have this smoke kind of coming out of the bottom. Black Cat it works really well with because she is very more animated looking and not this hyper-realistic look they're going for. It's a little weird still because she doesn't really look like she's fitting into the scene with Green Goblin or Spider-Man, which those two definitely you can tell were designed together. They were designed to go together and especially with the pumpkin bombs and everything. Those two made sense to me. This here doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't go with any of them. It looks so different from all of them. And to have all three of them, I mean, as a collector of, of Spider-Man especially, and that I have that Spider-Man, this is really off-putting because they're not going to look good together. It's not like the comic version that they did 10 years ago of all three of them, the way the buildings were, the way everything worked. They were different enough, but they really functioned well together. So that's kind of a hard sell for me. Did I order this one for this show or did I not? Unfortunately, I did not. And I think you kind of could probably tell that through my voice and the giant poop leg. It's not, doesn't work for me. Like he's just, that face alone, if you could take that face and put that onto the comic at Venom, you'd have a win selling in two, uh, two seconds for me. Even if they had probably gotten away with changing the base so I could have put him and Carnage together in like a fighting stance, would have been beautiful and would have been would have been my thumbs up on my pre-order. So unfortunately, yes, it was a big rejection for me on this one. It just it's not working. I don't it's just not enough for the price point, especially considering for this price point, you can still get a non-exclusive version of the Spider-Man on eBay if you luck out. So I would definitely put my money into that because if you watch the review on the Spider-Man that I have on the show, it's pretty glorious and it's an incredible addition to a collection. So yes, that's my two cents. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Leave a comment in the comment if you totally disagree with me, love this Venom, and you think that all of what I said of what didn't, didn't work, I still wanna hear your pins and opinions. I still wanna hear your advice. And give a thumbs up if you like it. And I will see you on next week's edition of Pre-Orders and Prototypes. Thanks, everyone.